So today I'll be talking about uh, great circle sailing and mnemonic charts and I'll try to distinguish it from Mercator sailing uh, so that you guys are very clear on what is great circle sailing and what is Mercator sailing and when do you use each of the sailings. All right. So let's start with what a great circle is. A great circle is a circle the plane of which passes through the center of the earth. So let's take the example is that of an equator. Equator, if you put a plane through the equator, it will cut the circle into two equal halves. Or each of the meridians, if you think about each of these meridians, if you think about them like segments of orange, they will cut to the orange into two equal halves. All right. It's the largest circle possible on a sphere. Uh, like I said, it divides the earth into two equal halves. There is only one great circle possible between any two points except when it's at the poles and the shorter arc of the great circle is the shortest distance between two points. A great circle has two poles at 90 degrees away from each other. However, a few things that you have to understand about great circle sailing is that great circle track is the shortest distance between the two points. It's not always the best choice and I'll tell you why. And a great circle course is a circular path and requires constant course alteration. Now, uh, not only because a great circle course is a circular path and requires constant course alteration, but a great circle will also take you into higher latitudes where the weather might be bad or it might be too cold or the ship may not be suited for such navigation. And that is why it is not always the best choice. But uh, the difference between rum line sailing, which is Mercator sailing and great circle sailing is that uh, rum line courses are also the shortest distance between any two points, which is involving uh, Mercator sailing, but when you talk about uh, distances which takes you across the poles or across the Atlantic, the great circle becomes the shortest distance between two points. And the problem with great circle is that a great circle is only drawn as a straight line on a mnemonic chart, uh, not on a Mercator chart. So you cannot draw great circle courses on a Mercator chart. On a Mercator chart, you can only draw rum line courses, but there is a way out of it and we'll be talking about that as well. All right. So a great circle, if you draw it on the Mercator chart, it will appear as a curve. And on the other hand, a rum line course, when you draw it on the great circle, appears as a curve as well. And this is something we discussed in our last video when we talked about Mercator sailing. Now for short distances, difference between great circle and rum line tracks is very small. That's what I was saying before. Uh, the difference between great circle and rum line is small for courses which have a major north-south component. If you are going on a north-south course, the difference is very small. And uh, the problem is that a great circle course takes you into higher latitudes and bad weather because of which the great circle is not always the best course to follow. But it is definitely the shortest distance between two points, especially if you think about large distances which cover across Atlantic poles. All right. So if you look at the figure here, uh, figure on your left is showing a great circle track from A to B through C and D. And then if you compare it to the right hand side drawing, it also shows the rum line track from A to B through E and F. So you can see that the rum line track, the rum line track comes as a curved line on a great circle or on a mnemonic chart or on a surface of the earth. And that's why you cannot draw rum line courses on mnemonic charts that are used for great circle sailing. You can only draw great circle courses. Now, as you can see here, the great circle track and the rum line track here are drawn on a Mercator chart. So if you can see that the great circle course that appears as a straight line on the surface of the earth or on a mnemonic chart would appear as a curved line. So what you see as the curved line on the right side is actually a great circle and the one that you see as a dotted line is a rum line because on your right side is the Mercator chart. So you can identify a Mercator chart because the meridians are drawn parallel to each other and they are equidistant place and that's why they are Mercator charts. But you cannot plot a great circle course on a Mercator chart because it will come as a curve line. But there's a way out and I'll talk about it later on. Uh, and uh, I'll show you a few figures and drawings as well to explain the whole concept here. All right. Now every great circle or the arc of every great circle has a point which is called the vertex. And if you have seen my previous questions uh, where I have solved uh, questions involving great circle, I have actually shown you how to calculate the vertex. So a great circle will have two vertices, one in each hemisphere, which is 180 degrees apart. The D long, or the difference in the longitude between the equator crossing and the vertex 
is 90 degrees. If you see, you know what I mean, you can see the figure here. You can see the point at which the uh, great circle crosses the equator and the vertex is about 90 degrees. The great circle direction at vertex is exactly east or west. And the reason is because that is the highest point of curve of a great circle of arc of a great circle. It is when you come at a, when you come at the point of the vertex and for a very small distance, the curve can kind of becomes like a parallel straight line if you really focus into it. And that's why it's exactly east or west. All right. It's important for you to know the position of the vertex so that you can avoid going into high latitudes because for any great circle course, the vertex will be the highest point of uh, highest point of the grid circle. So if you can find out the position of the vertex, you know which is the maximum latitude that you'll be crossing. Now, if you are the uh, officer who's planning the passage, you should find out the position of the vertex and then inform the master. And then of course the master will take the decision whether he or she wants to cross that latitude or not. If not, then we'll engage in something called composite grid circle sailing, which will be discussed later on today in this video. It will be the last slide for today. But finding out the position of the vertex is very useful for us to find out whether we want to transit a particular latitude or not. Because in some latitudes, uh, the higher the latitude, uh, even the magnetic compass becomes unreliable. Uh, the olden days, even the gyro compass used to become a bit unreliable. But nowadays, in the new days, uh, the gyro compass is quite reliable, uh, even north and south of 70 degrees north and 70 degrees south. But uh, because of the bad weather, because of the extreme ice conditions, many masters avoid going into latitudes uh, which are too north or too south. And that's why find out during your great circle course, which is the highest point and which is the vertex. Now, I have, of course, shown you numerically how to find out the vertex you're involving calculations. But there's a rule of thumb with vertex is that uh, if your initial course and final course are in the same hemisphere, the vertex will lie in the same hemisphere. It will lie outside the course and it will lie towards the higher latitude. If A and B are in different hemispheres, that is if your initial course and your final course are in different hemispheres or they are in different quadrants, the nearest vertex will lie in the hemisphere of the higher latitude. So vertex is always drawn towards the latitude which is of higher value. All right. Only thing is that if uh, the initial and final course are in different quadrants, the vertex lies between the initial and end final position the point a between a and b if they are in if the initial and final course are in the same quadrants then the vertex will lie outside a and b all right and this is what i was trying to say before so you can see here in one in the first figure uh, the initial course is northeast and the final course is southeast and that's why vertex is between a and b and in the next figure both uh, initial Next figure as well, the initial course is northwest and the final course is southwest, so vertex is between A and B. Uh, but over here, the initial and final courses are all in the same quadrants. That is, one is both in the northeast or both in the northwest or both in the southeast or both in the southwest. At that point of time, the vertex is outside A and B, but no matter what, the vertex is always drawn towards the higher latitude. Uh, a few things you have to understand. It's, it's not practical to follow an exact great circle track the reason is that uh, in this world, uh, mariners are popularly using Mercator charts. Mercator charts are more readily available. They are available for all scale sizes. So they are available in large scale as well as small scales. And uh, they are manufactured more and they are covered pretty much all the areas. However, uh, mnemonic charts on which great circles can be drawn as a straight line and can be used for navigation, uh, they are much fewer in number and they are more, mainly small scale charts. So that covers a large uh, geographical area, but because they are small scale, they do not outline the dangers to navigation or landmarks or small islands or wrecks or everything. So they cannot be used for navigation. That is why we cannot practically use grid circle. So if we try to follow grid circle courses, uh, we will have to alter uh, the course many times and I'll show you why it is so if I can show it to you. So look at the charts here. You can see the charts here. The mnemonic chart pretty much looks like the how a globe will be uh, projected, including its orthomorphic projections of uh, the meridians, right? But however, the Mercator chart, although it's also a cylindrical orthomorphic projection of the globe, here the meridians are automatically they are straightened out. They are not uh, they are straightened out and parallel to each other. All right, so if you see, this is the difference between mnemonic and marketer. What you have to understand is how the sailing actually takes place. So a great circle course or a no, great circle course is drawn as a straight line on a mnemonic chart. 
But what happens is because you cannot use a mnemonic chart for navigation, we normally what we do is we first plot out the great circle course on the mnemonic chart between the point of departure and the point of destination. And then on the great circle course, we start marking the great circle course at say every five degrees of longitude and we note down the waypoints. Once we note down the waypoints and that's what you see on the left side of your screen, we have noted down the waypoints on the great circle course at every five degree longitude. And then we use those waypoints and then plot it on the Mercator chart. As you see on the right side of the screen, you can plot it on the Mercator chart. So the dots that you see are actually the waypoints that have been plotted based on the coordinates that you got from the mnemonic chart. So once you join those dots, you can also see in this case, of course, you can see that the shorter part was the rum line course. And then you can draw a rum line course on the Mercator chart, which will come as a straight line. Otherwise, you would, if you had steered the great circle course, you would have to alter the course many a times and that would lead to a waste of time as well as waste of resources like fuel oil passage time would become longer and this is just a small portion that i'm showing you as an example think about courses which are drawn over thousands of miles so in that case it's impractical to sail great circle courses so let me repeat on what we do we draw a mnemonic or a great circle course on the mnemonic chart it comes as a straight line we draw it between two points it could be port of destination and between port of departure and port of destination. Once we draw the course, we note down the waypoints at every five degree longitude intervals. We make a note of the waypoint coordinates and then we start plotting those waypoint coordinates on the Mercator chart. Once we plot the coordinates, we can join the waypoints together. If we can find a rum line course, which is straighter, shorter, then we join it like I have shown you here. Uh, if not, then we can join as many waypoints as possible. And uh, but anyhow, in any case, the number of course alterations will be much lesser when you are selling uh, rum line courses on marketer charts. So you can see the difference here. Now for normal charts, you also have to understand that uh, uh, although the navigator, if he or she has to follow the shortest route between two positions, they must sail along a grid circle. So it would be very convenient to have charts on which grid circles are represented by straight lines. And that's why mnemonic chart has this property and it's very useful as far as it is constructed. These mnemonic charts are constructed on the mnemonic or tangential projection. In this projection, all the points on the surface of the Earth's sphere are projected from the center of the sphere to a plane which is tangential to the sphere. So the tangent point chosen is usually around the center of the area to be represented. All right, as, as I'm trying to show in the next few slides or something like that. All right. Here we can also see how the mnemonic in the mnemonic chart, the great circle course is a straight line and the rum line course is a curved line. Whereas on the Mercator chart, the opposite thing happens. The rum line becomes a straight lines and the great circle becomes like a curve. So if I continue with mnemonic projections, uh, distortions are present on a mnemonic chart because of the tangential projection. So you can see in the figure as well that distortion is uh, kind of nil at the tangent point uh, and but it starts to increase as the distance from the tangent point increases if the tangent point is uh, one of the poles the chart would be a polar mnemonic chart and on a mnemonic chart all great circles are therefore appearing as straight lines all right uh, compass roses are not shown on mnemonic charts as they are shown on mercator charts as they would be valid only for that particular location since meridians are kind of converging in these charts. Uh, the advantages of great circle charts, if I can think of any, is that uh, all the areas of the world, including the polar regions, are represented on mnemonic charts, as well as great circle courses can be easily laid off. So you can see they are much uh, smaller scale charts, but they cover much more areas on the earth. And the disadvantage, as you probably have guessed already, you cannot use it for navigation. Drumline courses cannot be drawn as a straight line. All right, this is a more close up look, as you can see. And hopefully, you're figuring out this is a Mercator chart again. And again, you can recognize the Mercator chart because the meridians appear here as parallel lines. They are parallel and equidistant from each other, which is not the charts. This is how mnemonic charts look. You can see the meridians are not parallel to each other, they are not equidistant placed from each other. They are pretty much a projection of the points from the Earth's surface. All right, so here there is some comparison here as well that you can see the great circle track here is about 3694 miles, whereas the rum line course on the drawn on the mnemonic chart is uh, 3791. So it's uh, about 100 odd miles higher or 100 odd miles more, which will cost the company more fuel. So that's why great circle courses are a good idea.
electrons. Finally, I'll talk about the composite grade circle ceiling. This is what I was mentioning before that sometimes the grade circle courses takes you into much higher latitudes than you wish to go to. Now, as a master, it's of course the master's decision to what latitudes the vessel should go up to and what vessel you, the master will feel safe to take the vessel up to. Uh, especially if the vessel is not equipped with ice cutters or it's not equipped to face uh, extreme weather conditions then some masters wish to sail only up to a particular latitude now that particular latitude is called the limiting latitude so when you are drawing a grade circle course uh, the master way might inform you and if you are the in charge of the passage planning then the master might inform you that he doesn't or she doesn't want to go north or south of a particular latitude so when you come up to that latitude when the grade circle course brings you up to that latitude you may not have reached the vertex but then that point or that latitude becomes the vertex for you. So in that case, you go up to a great circle course up to that latitude, sail on a parallel track that you see here on the figure. So from the point of vertex one to vertex two is a parallel track in which you engage in parallel sailing. And then you resume your great circle course to the port of destination. So at any point on the great circle course, you do not go up to the higher latitudes. So although it may not be the real vertex, but in this case, when a master has declared a limiting latitude, that becomes those latitudes becomes your vertex. And that's why it's called composite grade circle sailing. I have also made videos on composite grade circle sailing and how to calculate questions involving composite grade circle sailing. So I recommend you watch those videos as well, and you will get a better understanding of how to calculate uh, distances that involve composite grade circle sailing. So I hope this video was uh, useful to you guys to understand the difference between Mercator sailing rum line sailing and grade circle sailing and mnemonic charts and mercator charts uh, if there's something that you felt i missed or i didn't cover make sure you let me know through comments or through um, yeah comment section and if you like this video send me a like or send me a comment i look forward to your feedback all the way always uh, keep subscribing keep watching and you'll get notification about my further videos i'll see you soon with my next video guys all the best study hard bye